the tiny Japanese lander will never reach the moon's surface. Ouch, indeed. Japanese officials announced on Twitter that the Omotenashi Tracker's month spacecraft could not pick up a faltering CubeSat signal in time for the scheduled moon landing. Given that this was also a collaborative project with NASA Artemis 1, we weren't ready for it to disappoint. Interested in what went wrong? Stay tuned to find out. First up, here's what went down. The Japanese Aerospace and Exploration Agency tweeted that communication with the spacecraft could not be established and that the lunar landing maneuver operation couldn't be carried out. Soon after launch, Omotenashi and nine other CubeSats detached from the Artemis 1 Space Launch System rocket. According to the Japanese Aerospace and Exploration Agency, the small spacecraft was spotted on two days, raising the possibility that it can be reassigned to a new mission in March 2023, when communication possibilities may be better. Now, what was the reason? So, to tell you the truth, the exact reason why the small probe wasn't hailed in time isn't known yet. They're looking into it, but there's no final verdict. But that doesn't mean there are no speculations. Regulations. According to the first signals from a ground station, the CubeSat appeared to be rotating quickly, and its solar cells weren't facing the sun. We found an explanation on Twitter saying that the team tried to fix this by venting some fuel to counterbalance the movement, but insufficient voltage pushed them to turn off the transmitter. Suppose you're wondering why the spacecraft has such a weird name. In that case, we should tell you that it's an abbreviation for Outstanding Moon Exploration Technologies displayed by Nano Semi Hard Impactor. This epic little machine was originally expected to make a hard landing attempt from 328 to 626 feet above the lunar surface, and the spacecraft would have been protected against a risky dive using airbags and a shock absorption mechanism. Of course. Moving on, where is it now? The CubeSat looks pretty sad, floating all by itself in deep space. It's estimated that for the upcoming few months, the orbital dynamics between Earth and Omotenashi aren't conductive to try a new mission. What's more, the sunlight conditions relative to the spacecraft's uncontrolled position aren't ideal either. But here's the thing. Mission Authority stated through Twitter that those doors might open in the spring. To be completely honest, the Japanese have recovered lost missions before and at considerably greater distances. Yes, we're referring to the current Akatsuki mission to Venus, giving them some impressive scientific results. Next, a look at the revival of Akatsuki. It was recovered from a 2010 missed orbital insertion, and it entered the orbit of Venus in 2015. Akatsuki was the first successful mission for Japan to explore a different planet. Its objectives include examining Venus's weather patterns, verifying the presence of lightning in dense clouds, and looking for evidence of active volcanism. The Venus Climate Orbiter mission, known as Akatsuki, investigates Venus's atmospheric circulation. It's doing great work with the worldwide mapping of clouds and minor constituents with four cameras at ultraviolet and infrared wavelengths. What's more, it's tasked with detecting lightning with a high-speed imager, and the radio science observation of vertical structure of the atmosphere will be used to gather meteorological data. Owing to this amazing tech, we'll soon have access to an unprecedentedly huge data set of Venusian atmospheric dynamics. Of course, we have to thank the systematic, constant imaging observations. The mission's other goals include ground surface exploration and zodiacal light observation. It complements the Venus Express mission of the European Space Agency, which orbited Venus until 2014. See, Akatsuki pulled all these amazing discoveries after almost being thought of as a lost cause, much like the tiny Japanese probe. The point is, when there's hope, there's a way. So let's not give up on the probe, and let's not underestimate the absolute tech giants sitting in Japan working day day and night to make this work. They'll bring this baby back around. Moving on, what was the plan for the probe? NASA's Artemis 1 mission, which included a tiny Japanese lunar lander, was launched successfully on November 16th, 2022. CubeSat will fly by the moon, come close to the Earth once, and then exit the Earth's gravitational sphere. That's what the mission representatives gave away in Japanese in a tweet. If the spacecraft's spin is steady, it should better align with the sun in March. That'd ideally allow it to harness more solar energy. The mission representative says that they'll pick up the search around this time, and once they can get in touch with the spacecraft, they'd like to run certain experiments that can be done in orbit. The testing will concentrate on equipment that would eventually enable the small spacecraft to go to far-off places, they stated, but little else is revealed in the tweet thread. Even though Japan's moon landing didn't go as planned, Hayabusa 2's success on the asteroid was a win for the nation. In 2018, two near-twin rovers descended onto the surface of the asteroid Ryugu and toured it, sending out footage as they moved. But Omotenashi would have been the nation's first lunar lander. So yes, it's a bit of a bummer that it didn't make it. 
Another Artemis 1 satellite seems to be going down in the ditch. Coming up next, which one is it this time? The Orion spacecraft made a historic trip to the moon and back during NASA's spaceflight system's first launch, but the rocket's secondary payloads have been having problems. On November 16th, from Florida's Kennedy Space Center, the space launch system carried nine more tiny satellites as secondary payloads in addition to NASA's Luna HMAP CubeSat. The task of the lunar CubeSat is to calculate how much the moon's shadows conceal water ice, but sadly, the small probe made a critical error just before it was supposed to fly by the moon. To save the project, NASA is still aiming to fix Luna HMAP's bug during the coming months, the space agency noted in a recent blog post. Let's look at how this one will go. Luna HMAP was one of the six Artemis CubeSats that could transmit radio signals to ground troops after being launched. According to NASA, the CubeSat turned on and started communicating with Earth about five and a half hours after launch. The neutron spectrometer, solar arrays, and other onboard instruments of Luna HMAP were also deployed, with the spectrometer beginning to gather raw data. The CubeSat's propulsion system was activated a day later in preparation for the mission team's intended flyby of the moon. The satellite made repeated attempts to start its engine, but it couldn't do so in time for the lunar flyby. This maneuver was meant to propel the spacecraft in the direction of its orbit around the moon. Next, what's wrong with it? The mission team's early examination suggests that the CubeSat's propulsion system valve may be blocked. The research team thinks that if the valve is heated, it may finally release itself, allowing ignition. According to NASA, the mission may still be able to complete all or part of the planned science goal for Luna H map if the propulsion system can generate thrust over the next few months. There are still several possibilities accessible to mission designers, including alternative routes that could put Luna H map in lunar orbit. There may be other trajectories beyond the Earth Moon system that would allow the CubeSat to fly to nearby asteroids and examine their hydrogen content instead if it takes more than a few months to fix the spacecraft's issue. Ground teams have already instructed Luna HMAP to heat its propulsion valve to establish trust as quickly as possible. Several photographs of the moon were also successfully taken by the CubeSat Star Tracker, which measures the positions of stars to aid with orientation. The spacecraft may be able to beam down these images within the coming days. Lastly, Luna HMAP isn't the only one glitching. The Luna HMAP isn't the only CubeSat launched aboard the Space Launch System and later had problems. While Lockheed Martin's Lunar spacecraft has only been able to send out a feeble signal, two CubeSats, near Earth NASA's Asteroid Scout and Miles Space Team Miles, haven't gotten in touch. After launch, only six of the ten CubeSats were decided to be functional. The Lunar Ice Cube and Luna HMAP, the European Space Agency's Argo Moon, the Southwest Research Institute's CUSP, JAXA's Eculus, and BioSentinel. Missions using these spacecraft are less expensive but have varying degrees of success. This raises the possibility that the satellite's performance was impacted by the delays of NASA's Artemis 1 mission, which may be why there was an unusually high failure rate for CubeSats launched on the same mission. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think Artemis 1 will be able to salvage the tiny probe? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you at the next one!